All right, guys, welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! From Scratch. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about spell and trap cards. And I think this one will be a lot shorter, and I can actually go through quite a bit more in terms of like actual effect chaining, which I think is super useful for when you actually need to play a game and you can get an idea of how to respond to opponent's card effects and how they can respond to your card effects. What is going on, guys? Um, I just wanted to make a quick announcement that uh, I know in this video I keep on mentioning that uh, we're going to go over effect chaining in this video, but actually after recording it, I realized that if I included both the spell and trap effects and the effect chaining, that it was going to be over 20 minutes, and I wanted to make this more into like bite-sized chunks of information, and I felt like having both the spells and traps and the effect chaining in the same video was a little too overwhelming. So I've actually split it up into two videos. So this one will just contain the spells and traps, and then the next one will actually have all of the effect chaining. We'll go a lot deeper into that, um, but it's only gonna be roughly like seven minutes for the next video, seven to 10 minutes. So at least that way you can kind of digest it better, I feel like. So if in this video I mentioned that we're gonna be talking about effect chaining, just kind of ignore that, that's for the next video. I just wanted to leave this as a little announcement at the beginning of the video. And if you do like the way that I'm describing all these different things in these videos, feel free to leave a like and a comment letting me know. That way it gives me an idea of what I'm doing right. And also feel free to subscribe. All right, catch you guys later. Enjoy the video. And uh, we'll just get started and get right into it. So spell and trap cards are pretty similar in how they're designed. Spell cards will have this blue background, as you can see right here in Mystical Space Typhoon. And trap cards will have this purple background. And obviously they're going to say spell or trap card. Um, so basically how you can read a card is they have a card name just like the monsters They also have a type. So this is pretty simple. It's literally just spell or trap Those are the only two types they can have uh, And then they are gonna have a they, or they might have a different icon depending on what kind of spell or trap they are so uh, I'll go over that in a sec, but basically there are different kind of subcategories of spell cards and trap cards But they're pretty self-explanatory for the most part uh, we're also going to have a card description, which will just basically tell you how to activate the effect, what the effect does, and things like that. Also, the card numbers, the same thing with the monster cards, just tells you what set it came out of, etc. And so, going back to the icon, there are several different types of spells and traps. We're going to go over the different ones. So, there are equipped spell cards, there are field spell cards, quick play spell cards, ritual spell cards continuous spell and continuous trap cards and counter trap cards there are normal spell cards so they just basically have single use effects to use a normal spell card you just announce the activation and place it face up on the field in the spell and trap card zone if the activation succeeds then you can resolve the effect on the card and then there are ritual spell cards which you can use to ritual summon uh, ritual monsters so these basically use uh, act the same as normal spell cards there are continuous spell cards, which once they are placed on the field, they are remained on the field and you can use their effect while the card stays up on the field. By using continuous spell cards, you can continue to use continuous spell card effects and gain additional advantage from them. However, if they do remove, if they are removed from the field, then you will obviously lose those effects. So continuous spell cards need to be face up on the field to resolve. So what that means is like, let's say you activate a continuous spell card and someone destroys it with like Mystical Space Typhoon over here that destroys one spell and trap card on the field. Mystical Space Typhoon in and of itself does not negate. So if you play like a normal spell card and try to hit it with MS, it's also called MST for short. Let's say you activate this Lightning Vortex and you try to hit it with MST, then this Lightning Vortex would still resolve because it can resolve without needing to be on the field once it's activated. However, with continuous spell cards, if you activate a continuous spell card and then your opponent MSTs it, then that effect is not going to resolve because it needs to be on the field to resolve. Equip spell cards. So these spell cards are cards that inherently target a monster. And that's going to be important later. But basically, they target a monster on the field that's a valid target. And then they are equipped to that monster. So they remain on the field even after they're activated. They, like I said, they stay equipped to the monster. And the equip spell card can only affect one monster. Um, and it still, it still stays in your spell and trap card zones, kind of like a continuous spell. Um, this says, if possible, place it in the zone directly behind the equipped monster to help you remember. Uh, that's not really valid anymore. I'd actually recommend not doing that because there are cards that are uh, called Mech Knights, which can actually special summon themselves if you have cards in the same um, column. 
And so you can actually put yourself at a disadvantage if you do that. If the equip monster is destroyed, flip face down or move from the field, its equip cards are also destroyed. So if somebody activates Book of Moon on one of your monsters with an equip spell card, that equip spell card goes to the grave. Um, field spell cards are cards that go in the field uh, spell zone or the field zone, and they stay there until they are destroyed or until their own effect removes them, etc. Each player can have one field spell card on their own side of the field. So if you are like a returning Yu-Gi-Oh player, this is actually a lot different than it used to be before field spell cards. If you activate one and then your opponent activates one after, it would remove your current field spell card. Now that's not the case. Each player can have one field spell. And if you want to play a field spell when you already have a field spell, you can still do that. You just send the existing field spell to the grave and then you activate your next one. Um, and there are a lot of field spell effects that apply to both players, so make sure that you read through that when you're choosing your uh, field spells and when you're activating their effects and stuff like that. Uh, field spell cards can be placed face down in the field zone, but they are not active until they're placed face up. Quick play spell cards are important. Um, these are actually super beneficial. They're, they can be activated during any phase of the turn, not just the main phase. Um, I guess that's something I kind of glanced over before that I should have mentioned. Spell cards can normally can normally only be activated during the main phase. Um, and they are spell speed one. Like normal spell cards are spell speed one, which we'll go over um, once we once we talk about trap cards. One really important thing to note about quick play spell cards is that you can also activate them during your opponent's turn if you set it face down first. But then you cannot activate it the same turn that you set it. So with regular spell cards, even if you set it, you can still activate it that turn. With quick play spell cards, you cannot. Once you set it, you have to wait a turn before you can use it. But you can use them on your opponent's turn, so that's the advantage. Uh, trap cards are fairly similar, um, except for in the sense that they have to be set before you can activate them. So they can help you out with different um, effects, just like the spell cards, but... Um, the biggest difference is that you can activate pretty much all spell card, uh, sorry, trap cards during your opponent's turn. Trap cards typically aren't played as much anymore just because you have to set them first, which means that they're a lot slower. Um, there are some trap cards that you can activate under certain conditions. Uh, one being like infinite impermanence, which you can activate from your hand even when, or only when you have no monsters on the field, uh, which is a super powerful card. It also negates a monster effect, which is um, really good. And uh, we actually ended up pulling one in the pack openings for the dual overload set um, so if you haven't checked that out i do recommend checking it out that was a huge pull from that set so like i said before you can activate a trap card you must set it on the field first um, you cannot activate trap cards in the turn that you set it but you can activate anytime after that starting from the beginning of the next turn normal trap cards are like normal spell cards where they have single use effects and once they're resolved they'll be sent to the graveyard just like normal spell cards one important thing to note about setting cards, though, is that your opponent can destroy them on the turn that they were set, and then they, you cannot activate them on that turn. So going back to the MST example, if your opponent sets an MST on their turn, and then it's your turn, then they can activate that MST on your turn. So then let's say that they have that set MST, and then you set a card like Trap Hole and end your turn. During that end phase, they can activate MST to destroy your Trap Hole, and you can't activate it in response or anything like that because uh, you had just set it that turn. There are continuous trap cards, which are very similar to continuous spell cards. They remain on the field once they're activated and their effects continue while they're face up on the field. Um, they're, they also have abilities similar to like the ignition or trigger effects uh, that can be activated on monster cards. Like for example, remember the ignition effect? It's a spell speed one that you would have to declare like activating. Um, like I, you know, I'm activating this effect to destroy one monster on your side of the field or something like that. And trigger effects are effects that happen uh, under certain conditions. So like if a monster is sent to the graveyard, things like that. Counter trap cards are some of the more important trap cards that you need to look out for. So these are normally activated in response to the activation of other cards and can sometimes have effects of like negating effects um, or responding to like certain scenarios, um, like, like especially like ones that are activated during summoning of monsters that like negate the summon of the monster, things like that. Um, these traps are very effective because they are spell speed three, which puts them at the uh, the highest spell speed, which means that you, know, you can only respond to a counter trap card with another counter trap card. And we'll go over that in just a second when we go over spell speeds. Okay, so now let's go over uh, chaining and spell speeds. This is kind of the more interesting part of Yu-Gi-Oh! 
And I will be going into more depth of chaining and spell speeds and when you can activate certain effects and things called like chain blocking in another video that's, that's going to be more geared towards that specifically because there's kind of a lot to go over there. But we'll go over the basics so that you can get an idea of how Yu-Gi-Oh is played and how to basically respond to your opponent's effects. So chains are a way to order the resolution of multiple card effects. So if there are certain activation conditions that meet multiple cards on the field and you want to activate them, chaining is kind of how you build that interaction and how it gets uh, resolved. So if a, card, if, if a card's effect is activated, the opponent is always given a chance to respond with a card effect of their own, creating a chain. If your opponent responds with an effect, then you can choose to respond and add another effect onto the chain. If your opponent does not respond, you may activate a second effect and create a chain to your own card's activation. Both players continue to add effects to the chain until they both wish to add nothing else, and then you resolve the chain in the reverse order. So that's super important, uh, starting with the last card that was activated. You must always be careful not to resolve the effects of your cards before asking your opponent if you wish to make a chain. I see this happen a lot where um, players will uh, activate an effect and then immediately go to resolve it, um, but you can't just do that in Yu-Gi-Oh! You have to wait for your opponent to be able to have a response. And also, you cannot activate card effects while a chain is resolving, uh, which is super important. So, like, for example, if someone is activating a, um, activating a card effect, and let's just say it allows them to search their deck, and then, like, as they're searching or whatever, uh, they grab something, and then you try to activate something, you, and there's still more effects in the chain, you can't just do that because the, there are other effects that need to resolve before you can start a, a new chain. And I'll kind of go over that in, in a second. And then there are spell speeds. Every type of card has a spell speed between one and three. If you want to respond to a card effect in a chain, you have to use an effect with a spell speed two or higher, and it cannot have a lower spell speed than the one you are responding to. So that's kind of what I was talking about um, with the counter trap cards. As you can see here, counter trap cards are a spell speed three. That makes them the essentially the highest uh, spell speed. There is um, a term that you might hear thrown around a lot, which is spell speed four, uh, which is not an official term, but it's kind of what people use to call cards that have an effect that cannot be responded to. So there are several cards in the game that you cannot respond to their effects. Cards like Super Polymerization, um, Dark Ruler No More, Forbidden Droplet. These cards have effects that your opponent cannot respond to with either certain card effects or with card effects at all. And so that's kind of why they're considered spell speed four because you just, once they're activated, you basically can't stop them uh, with those certain types of effects or in the case of super polymerization, not at all. Mm -hmm. And so there are different, uh, this kind of goes over the different spell speeds. So spell speed one are basically all normal spells, equipped spells, continuous field ritual, effect monster, uh, effect monsters effects. So like ignition, trigger and flip, stuff like that. It's the slowest of all the spell speeds. They cannot be activated in response to any other effects. Um, and these, eff <clears throat> these effects are typically not chain link two or higher unless there are multiple spell speed one effects that activate simultaneously. This happens more so in like trigger effects where like if there are two cards where if they're sent to the graveyard, they have an effect. And let's just say you're using those two monsters for a summon of like another monster, then those two effects would happen. Like chain link one would be one monster, chain link two would be another monster. Um, and that's typically how the like spell speed ones get stacked onto each other. Spell speed two effects are normal and continuous traps, quick play spells, and effect monster quick effects. So remember the one like on Red Eyes Dark Dragoon that says you can negate the effect of a card by discarding a card. That would be like a spell speed two, the, that quick effect right there. And these can typically be activated during any phase unless specified. And then spell speed three would be the counter trap. So like I mentioned, this is the fastest of all the spell speeds and can be used to respond to a card of any spell speed. Only another spell speed three may be used to respond to that card effect. So now that we've gone over the different types of spell and trap cards, we should probably go over how to play them. <laughs> you just place the spell card from your hand into the spell and trap card zone, follow the instructions on the card, and then put the card in the graveyard after it's been used. How to play a trap card is pretty similar, except for you have to set it first. Uh, so this nice little chart kind of charts this out for us. Spell cards, you can play them right from your hand. You can use them during the main phase of your own turn uh, for normal spell cards or pretty much anything that's not a quick play spell card. And then uh, you just follow the instructions on the card and then place it in the graveyard afterward. Trap cards, you have to set them face down before using them and you can use them during any time of the turn, but just not the turn that you set it. Then you follow the instructions on the card and then put it in the graveyard. So they're pretty easy. 
All right, guys, so that's going to just about cover it for spells and traps for this episode. Remember, like I said, the next episode is going to be the one that has all the effect chaining stuff, so make sure to check that out. If you like the video, feel free to leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe as well. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.